horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. This faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Away! Tom Allen, a pioneer in the West, had planned to return to the eastern home of his daughter after 30 years of great success as a rancher. At the farewell party given in his honor, he made a speech in which he explained his plans for the future. And because my daughter Ellie's husband refuses to give up his business to come out here, and I'm going to give in and go back there. I aim to see my daughter and grandchildren before I die. What are you going to do with your ranch, Tom? <laughs> you might know that Clyde Burton had asked that question. <laughs> that neighbor of mine's been pestering me to sell my ranch to him ever since he came here five years ago. <laughs> well, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> That's telling you, Clyde. You going to let somebody run the ranch for you, Tom? No, I sold my cattle, got rid of my hands. I'm going to get rid of the land, too, all 15 square miles of it. Yep. <laughs> but I'm not going to sell it to you, Clyde. Well, you don't have to rub it in. Uh, you want to know what I'm going to do with that ranch of mine? What are you going to do, Tom? Going to sell it to the Apaches? <laughs> going to come back to it with a wife? Oh, no, no. Mary's the only wife I ever had or ever wanted. No one can take her place. If you want to know what I'm going to do, come down to the station before I leave tomorrow afternoon. Huh? You too, Clyde. It's going to be a surprise. Oh, <laughs> it is too. You'll all see. But as I was saying before, I hate to leave you people here. After the party, Tom Allen rode as far as Clyde Burton's ranch house, then continued on to his own house, five miles farther out along the trail. Shortly after midnight, two men, Joe Leonard and Gink Fannin, rode up to Clyde Burton's ranch house and dismounted. Oh, 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 oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Uh, steady, Ron. Burton greeted them and answered their unasked questions. Boys, things didn't turn out too well tonight. Old man Allen refused to sell me his ranch. I tried to talk to him before the party, and he wouldn't even listen to me. Hey, you didn't figure on that, did you? No, I thought with his going away, he'd let it go for a song. Then at the party tonight, he told everyone he's... Well, I don't know what he has in mind, but whatever it is, I aim to see that he doesn't do it. Hey, how can you stop him? 
Kill him? Uh, what good will killing him do? On his way from the party tonight, he rode this far with me. I pumped him and learned not even his lawyer has been told how Alan intends to dispose of the ranch. Alan hopes to surprise him, too, when he brings the papers to town in the morning to have them put in legal form. Hey, I get it. If Alan dies before the papers are made legal and before anyone knows what's in them... Right. I'll forge new ones that say I have the privilege to buy the ranch for a few thousand dollars. Alan's the kind who'd do a thing like that, and people will think it's the surprise he mentioned in his speech tonight. Yeah, what do you want us to do, boss? Go to his ranch tonight. Get that paper that tells how he's going to transfer the ranch. That's the one I want destroyed, so no one will find it later and perhaps figure things out. How much time do we have to do this, boss? No more than five or six hours. Alan told me he had to bring his papers to Jed Williams' law office in the morning to have them put into legal form. We want things in order by then, before they start to look for him. So get going now. Joe Leonard and Gink Fannin reached Tom Allen's ranch house about an hour later. They made their way to the front door, which was unlocked, and entered stealthily. They wore bandanas across their faces. Be quiet now. I think I hear him in the next room. Yeah, he's there, all right. Uh, who is it? Who's out there? Hey, Joe, there's a light showing under the door of his room. Yeah, it's a lamp, that's all. Be quiet, he's coming. Who's out here, anyway? I heard the horses, and I know... Oh! Surprise, huh? You don't want us to use these guns, do as I say. Why, what, what is this, a little joke? No, it's not a joke. Put that lamp over there on the table. Do what he says. Move, put it on the table. Well, if that's what you want. There. Oh, that darn curtain. Yeah, it's fixed. Well, now, why are you two fellas wearing bandanas and waving those guns like that? Where's your money, Tom? You know my name, don't you? <laughs> this is a little joke you're playing, oh. isn't it? I'll show you if it's a joke or not. Hey, you almost nipped my ear. I made it close to prove we weren't fooling. Next time, maybe I'll hit you. If you don't get Let me that... handle this. But Tom, we know you have a lot of money around here and some papers, too. We want them. Now, where are they? I'm not going to tell you. I said, where are the papers? You're not scaring me with your guns and your tough acting. I haven't any money in this house. And I don't know what papers you're talking about. Oh, you don't, huh? <laughs> Maybe this will help you remember what papers. My arm, you'll, you'll break it, you yellow coyote. Yeah. If you put aside that gun, old as I am, I'll make mincemeat out now of you. Put on your fist and stand right here. We haven't any time to waste. Now tell us, where's your money? And where are those papers you're supposed to take down at Jed Williams' place? Oh, you two know everything, don't you? Well, if those are the papers you want, I can't figure why you want them. But they're not in this house, I'll tell you that. I got them hid. Where? I'm not telling you. Now or any other time. So what are you going to do? Yeah, you'll see. Look after this old goat while I take a look through the place. Right. And keep your hands off of them. Just cover them till I search the bedroom. This isn't going to take long. <laughs> Your pal said it wouldn't take long. He's been in there 20 minutes, ripping up the floor and everything else. He still didn't find anything. And he's not gonna... Shut up. Hey, Inner. Did you find that stuff yet? No. Bring that old goat in here. All right. All right, you come on inside. I'll come inside, all right. Hey, what the... Hey, give me that gun. I didn't expect this, did you? Oh, you, you old rattlesnake. Ah. Oh, no. Hey, Joe. What's going on? Hey, let go of him. No yellow coyote's going to hold Watch me. out for that lamp. Watch out. I, I, uh, he's choking me. Get him off. Let go of his throat. Not I see <laughs> his face. <clears throat> I know you. Joe, your name's uh, Gint. That's enough. Oh. He saw you. Had to knock him out. Hey, Gink, look. Fire. The place is on fire. Get out of the way. Let me shoot that old snake. Stop, you fool. The place is on fire. You knocked over the lamp. Gink, look at those flames. Yeah. Hey, I didn't know. we got to get out of here. Now, wait. Grab Alan. Get him outside. Let him stay here and burn. I should have shot him. Come back him. here. i got to get this hombre out of here and keep him alive till we find out where he hid this stuff. Now help me carry him to the horses. All right. <laughs> hey, 
Yeah, here we are, Ken. Help me get this fella across the front of your cell. Yeah. There you are. He's up there. Yeah, there's blood all over. Now what do we do? Take Alan up to the cave. Start making him talk when he comes to. Make him tell where the papers are hidden. You mean the cave back in the hills? Yeah, I mean that one. What other cave is there? I get riding up there quick. I'll ride to the boss's place and find out what he thinks we ought to do. Then I'll ride to the cave. All right, I'll be waiting. Easy, steady, Lightning. Come on, get up. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding through the hills, heading southward on a secret mission. They were making their journey at night because of the secrecy involved. As they rode around a turn in the road into the open, they stopped as their eyes beheld flames in the distance below. Who's it? Who's it? Tonto, there's a house on fire down there. Ah, whole house burned. There seems to be no one near the place. Maybe somebody inside. I was thinking the same thing. Uh, we ride down, see, Kimasabi? Yes. I'm anxious to complete this mission we're on in the shortest possible time. But we can't go on until we learn what's happening down at that fire. Monsilver! Get him up, scout! Ranger and Tonto rode down the long snake-like trail that finally led to the ranch of Tom Allen. The building was entirely in flames as they dismounted. Oh, 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 easy, oh, easy, oh, easy, and left their horses in a grove of trees nearby. The distance to this place was greater than it seemed from up there in the hills. Ah, take maybe an hour to ride here. If there was anyone inside the house, we're too late to help them now. Fire start to die out. House fall down soon. Yes, it's completely gutted. I can't distinguish anything within the flames. Can you make out anything? No. Must wait a while to see. Maybe... Kimasabi. What is it, Tonto? What's on the ground there? Look. Blood. Much blood on the ground. Yes, and it's fresh. It leads from the house. So someone must have escaped. Look close at grass. Footprints in grass. Yes, I see them. Those flames light up the area so completely you can make out the prints clearly. There seem to be two sets. Them lead over this way. Mm. Blood stains are thick right here in this spot. The hoof prints, too. Ah, two horses. The prints go out toward the road. The answer would seem to be that one person was wounded and was assisted to his horse by another. Ride to doctor, maybe. I imagine that's it. Oh, Hunter, listen. Ah, uh, me here, Kimosabi. Horses come this way. Hunter, I think I better get back into the shadows. Whoever's coming might get a wrong impression if they see a masked man at the scene of a burning house. Me go with you? No, stay here. Find out who owns this house if you can. I'll hide back here among these trees. Meantime, Gink Fannin had taken the unconscious form of Tom Allen to a cave in the nearby hills, and Joe Leonard had ridden back to Clyde Burton's ranch house. The crooked Burton, when he heard Joe's story, was furious, but he immediately saddled his horse, and together the two men were now approaching the site of the fire. Oh, who the hell? Hold it, Joe. Hold it. Oh, oh, hold it. Hey, what is it? What's the matter? Look, away from the house, out near the road. Someone's there, see? Oh, yeah. Hey, boss, it's an engine. Uh, sure enough, it is. Well, that's good. Good? Why? Because I thought it might be someone from town, someone I knew. Don't you think we ought to go right down to the cave, see what Ginks found out from the old man? No, Joe. I just had a brilliant idea. Huh? Well, what is it? Oh, that Indian sees us. He's looking in this direction. Yeah. We'll make Alan tell us what we want to know, Joe. I'll make sure of that. But if he has to die, well, when they find his body, there'll be no mystery about the identity of his killer. Huh? The Indian. We'll fix it so people will think the Indian set fire to the house and killed Tom Allen. Hey. Yeah, but how? I'll attend to that part. Let's ride up to where he is and let me handle the situation. Then you take your cues from me. Come on. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
all to continue. The flames that had consumed the Allen Ranch house were dying, but their light still extended to the spot where Tonto stood, his eyes on the approaching horsemen. The two men rode into the light and leaped from their horses. Oh, who the hell is it? <laughs> Clyde Burton had his gun ready and pointed it at Tonto menacingly. All right, Indian, get your hands up. We caught you dead to rights. Huh? Me not do anything. I he said get your come... hands up before I plug yeah, you. Yeah, I have not covered, too. Oh, you make mistake. Me do nothing. Me see fire. Yes, become... you saw the fire after you started it. You skulking redskin. You're the one who shot Tom Allen, and you're going to pay for it. Boss, you want me to shoot him now? Drop those guns, and you'll shoot no one. What? You're covered. I'll shoot if you don't drop those guns. Both of you. There, I've dropped mine. You too. Yeah, all right. There. Pick them up, Toto. Uh -huh. Let me get them. Who are you? Well, neighbors of Tom Allen's. I might ask, stranger, who you are. Judging by the mask you're wearing, you must be a partner of this murdering redskin. Toto is no murderer. And he didn't set fire to this house, as you said a minute ago. And this mask I wear is worn for reasons that don't concern you. Where'd you come from? What are you doing here? We were riding in the hills when we saw the flames. We came here to investigate. Well, that's why we've come. My ranch is down the road five miles from here. I was awake and saw the flames in the sky. So Joe and I rode here as soon as possible. Joe's my ranch boss. I see. I take it that Tom Allen owns this house that burned down. But uh, what's this about his being murdered? Nothing. Did I say that? Yes, you said that. And you accused Tonto of doing it. I'm sorry. I just thought... Well, I saw the house the way it is, and I figured... Well, I figured Tom Allen must have been inside when the fire started. Uh, we thought he was burned to death. Isn't that it, boss? Yes, exactly it. I thought he'd been burned and that the Indian... Well, did it? He must have a... Must have uh, never mind, Tonto. That... It was all a mistake, uh, wasn't it, Mr... Uh... Burton. Clyde Burton. Uh, yes, it was a mistake. I jumped at conclusions, that's all. Uh, we came here just like you to see what happened. As soon as we look through the ruins after the flames subside, we'll get the sheriff. Well, why not do that now? We'll be glad to inform him and tell him to ride out here. Oh, you don't have to do that, stranger. Joe will ride into New Hope and notify the sheriff. The town's quite a distance away. And, well, you'll be able to continue on your way now. Yes, we'll do that. Now that you'll get the sheriff out here, I don't know we'll get our horses. Uh -huh. Hey, what about our guns? The engine has them. Tonto will leave them out there on the road after we've ridden away from this spot. You might recover them. Otherwise, you might be inclined to use them against us. Oh, no, not at all. I, I told you that was a mistake. Well, mistakes do happen, I know. Nevertheless, that's what we'll do with your guns. Tonto? Uh -huh. The Lone Ranger and Tonto walked to the spot where they had left their horses. With their backs turned to the two men who waited near the road, Tonto spoke low. He must stop it. Why we go? Him stay. I that... know what he said, Tonto. He was positive when he said that you had shot Tom Allen. And later he forgot about the shooting part as he told that other story. Ah, uh, me not like way them act. Nor do I. There's something furtive and suspicious about their actions and the way they talk. Uh, them watch us. Me get on horse. He's Scout, easy, fellow. Others where they're standing now? Right over the spot where the blood stains are heaviest. Easy, steady, big fellow. Uh, what we do now, Kino Sally? We'll pretend to ride away from here. But we'll circle back after we've gone about a quarter of a mile and ride a short distance up into the hills where we can watch this place without being seen. But we'd better go now. Come on, Silver. Come up, Scout. Clyde Burton and Joe Leonard watched the Lone Ranger and Tonto ride out of the circle of light cast by the dying flames. Well, they're gone, boss. They're riding away from town. What do you figure about them? As long as they're not going to notify the sheriff, I don't have to figure anything about them. Get our guns where they dropped them on the road. I'll lead the horses out there and we'll ride at once to the cave. Tom Allen had been conscious for more than an hour. And during that time, Gink Fannin had used strenuous means to make the old man talk. But his efforts were in vain. Now, as footsteps were heard entering the cave, Allen was the first to see the two men who approached. Gink, here comes your partner with another one. The other one's got his face covered, too. So you've been working on the old goat, huh? Did he talk? Yeah, not yet. He's a tough old hombre. 
Won't say a word. Well, maybe he will now with the three of us using persuasion. Huh, boss? Mm. Your boss is afraid to talk. Why is that, boss? You afraid I might know your voice? Shut up. Why, Gink? You've been saying you wanted me to talk. You know, boss, I've been thinking a lot since these two come to my house, tried to rob me and then burn the place down. I said shut up. Ah, let him go on. The boss wants to hear this. How do you know the boss wants to hear me, Joe? How did you know who I was? You fool, he tricked you into that. <laughs> you are Joe Leonard, aren't you? Sure you are. You forget I know everybody in these parts. I recognized Gink when I pulled his mask off. Yeah, you Let should. me finish. When I came to, I figured that Gink Fannin and Joe Leonard were always together around the cafes. And so, well, I was right, wasn't I? All the good it's going to do you. Boss, let's kill him now. Yeah, he's never going to tell us where he hid the money of those papers you want. Those papers, that's another thing. Gink knows all about them. At least he knows I'm supposed to take them to Jed Williams' office at 8 o'clock. Did the boss tell you that, Gink? Did you, boss? You're afraid to talk, are you? Because you figure I'll recognize your voice. That's it, isn't it? Stop it. Stop asking those questions. Hey, boss. I, I know that voice. I know who you are now. Oh, I can't believe it. What can't you believe? You're Clyde Burton. That's who you are. Sure you are. I know it now. All right, I'm Clyde Burton. There, I'll take off my bandana. Take yours off too, Joe. Yeah, all right. I should have figured that you were the only one who knew I was going to go to see Jed Williams at 8 o'clock. I told you when we rode home together last night. I... <laughs> yes, I told you everything but the most important part of all. <laughs> hey, he's laughing. He's crazy. Yes, yeah, crazy to be fooled by Clyde Burton these past five years. But not as crazy as you, Clyde, for doing what you've done. What are you talking about? What important thing didn't you tell me? Why do you say I'm crazy? You've wanted my ranch a long time, Clyde. <laughs> and I'm going to get it after we kill you. I've made up a will copying your handwriting. It says I'm to have the right to buy your ranch for five dollars an acre. <laughs> what good will the will do you, even if it's a good forgery? Because people will think it's the surprise you talked about. <laughs> All right, don't tell us where you hid the papers that made the transfer. If we can't find them, nobody else will find them either. And you'll be dead, so the boss will get what he's after. <laughs> At five dollars an acre. <laughs> Clyde, that's why I'm laughing. The irony of all this, you were, you were going to get the ranch for nothing. What, what did you say? That was my surprise. I was going to have Jed Williams make up a deed to my ranch in your name. I planned to give it to you at the depot when I left. No. <laughs> funny, funny, isn't it? Have these men beat me? Oh, my head doesn't hurt as bad now as my heart does. You see, Clyde, I liked you as I'd like a son. Stop it! Don't say any more! I haven't long to live, so I'll say what I please. There was no reason for what you did, Clyde. No reason for forgery or, or the murder you're about to commit. Because you'll be forced to kill me now, you know. He's not going to kill anyone. The mask man. Don't reach for that gun. No, my wrist! You oh. not shoot either. No, no, don't fire. I didn't reach for my gun. Raise your hands, Burton. You again. Where did you come from? How did I follow you here, Burton? Followed me and Joe. Why? Because we were suspicious of you. You gave yourself away when we talked to you before. My wrist, it's broken. I will attend to it after he's dressed Tom Allen's wounds. How did I give myself away? By accusing Toto of shooting and killing a man who we find isn't dead yet. You anticipated that, didn't you? You planned to kill Allen, then put the blame on Toto. Isn't that it? You're a... How did you know? I know a lot of things now. For one, that you're going to jail. For another, that Alan here will have a chance to tear up those papers that deeded you his property. Isn't that right, Tom? It, it sure is. I'll help you now and get you to town and a uh, doctor. Well, wait just a minute, will you? There's something I must get back here in the rear of the cave. Uh, something in the rear of the cave? Yes. Say, you fellas didn't think you were the only ones that knew about this place, did you? I've been hiding things up here away from the house for over 20 years. Like money and papers, for instance. <laughs> you hear that, Clyde? Papers, hidden up here. You mean... Yes, that's what I mean. 
The papers you wanted to get from me were up here. Well, I'll tear them up. Then when I see Jed Williams at 8 o'clock, I'll have him fix up some legal documents given my ranch to the territory. It'll make a fine place for a county court, and a church, and a, a school. Oh, I sure am glad things happened the way they did. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto led their prisoners into the town of New Hope shortly after dawn. By eight o'clock, the three crooks were in jail, and Tom Allen was finishing his story to the sheriff. And so, Sheriff, I'll stick around a while longer till you get Burton and those other hombres to trial like you planned. Well, we'll need your testimony, Tom. Mask Man isn't going to stay here, is he? Here? Oh, gosh, no. I wish he was. But he's heading south where he was going when he saw the fire at my place. Oh, man, am I glad he stopped off. You should be. Tom, you, you talk like you know who he is. Do you? I only know what he did for me and what he's done for other people all over the West. And that's enough to know. Because he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>